there's an actual event occurring where a loved one is ill and close to passing, I refer to it as the transition. I don't refer to it as death because I don't experience death. I don't experience it as death. And I know my ancestors don't experience it as death. Yes, there is mourning. Yes, there is uh, ceremonial rites and honouring of the passing of that form of life that it will no longer occupy the same place in form um, and in time. So key to this is in actuality that we we have not nurtured rites of passage from the beginning. I remember being asked about the big question of death uh, with someone who was working for me, with me, who's also a, a public speaker, was going to be speaking on the topic of death. And he said to me, Isara, mm, you know, what, what would you say to the final goodbye and I said well you need to say a proper hello you can't say a proper goodbye if you haven't said a proper hello and of course he found that extraordinary and fascinating because again it seems counterintuitive that we we're then talking about death or ending or goodbye and I say well you want to say hello properly and the reason for this is because if we don't enter the world properly, if we're not consciously supported and we're not engaging with the world properly, we actually haven't said hello, we're half asleep, we're disengaged, we're fractured, we're dislocated. And consequently, we live in fear. We live unconsciously. We do not see the natural workings and order of existence. And therefore, how is it even possible to know that actually all of this is a continuum, that there is no true beginning or ending. It is continuum. And that is why I refer to the so-called event of death as transition. The form, you know, we even say, oh yes, but the body has died. Sure, we refer to that death as, well, that body is rapidly decomposing and, and will no longer be animated. But still, if you even look at that, that process, it is also a continuum, it is transition. And it's just that the human mind is compartmentalizing everything in freeze frames and is missing the gaps between those freeze frames. And because those gaps are missing, we don't see the, the thread of eternity. We don't see the threads of interconnectivity and so in all indigenous cultures, it starts with hello. It starts with that right entry, that right greeting of the moment of transitioning from the formless into form, emerging into this new, unique, wondrous experience. And each moment is a hello. And each moment is a rite of passage. And then within that, there are cycles. There are the micro passages and the macro passages. And within that, there are micro and macro and so on and so on. We get this order of different passages of transitioning. And then we see how there is no contradiction. Because on the one hand, we could say, Oh yes, but if you see that everything is eternal, there is no true death and everything is in transition, then why do you mourn? Well, that's because the paradox is embraced. That nothing remains. All is passing. And so there is a micro passage of what appears in a continuum of transition to be a passing that which appears as a beginning and an ending, the human life. And that that is unique and never, ever, ever to be experienced again. And it is that which we mourn. It is 
that in its mourning that reveals the sacred connection we have had, that we value and treasure how precious, unique and rare that experience is and has been. So mourning actually is a representation of the depth and degree of our connection and appreciation, whether consciously or not, for that uniqueness. And the reason most humans are struggling with that is because we're not having that fully conscious relationship now today. Most indigenous cultures have had their rights greatly uh, reduced and dismantled. And there has been an enormous amount of whitewashing. And one of the things I find fascinating about my own life, my own journey, is that I'm a product of that, yet that whitewashing did not silence my ancestral connection. And within that, that I have access to that vast resource of spiritual wisdom and knowledge. And likewise, through my elders and, and relations. So what can you do to deepen your own experience? You can start to read and learn more about rites of passage and how you can identify those in your own life and in the lives of your loved ones and families. Watch it in nature as well. All creatures follow rites of passage. It's innate to our physiology and our behavioral patterns. It's innate to all existence. And so if you start paying attention to this, you'll start having real hellos. And as you really embody this more deeply, you will be ready you will have your eyes open, you will see, you will know that so-called death is approaching, that that transition is forthcoming and rapidly approaching. And you will be consciously in that riverine. You will be holding the hand of your loved one, not just physically for a few fleeting moments when you're called to the hospital, but metaphorically energetically you will be absolutely united with your loved one in that transition there will not be fear there will be a celebration that this is an adventure and the greatest adventure and wonder to unfold is in that transition transition into birth and a new form and transition out of this form into the formless into the eternal realm to re-emerge again into another one and, and so we go back to the analogy of the ocean and the currents and and the wave that wave will subside again back into the deep current back into the ocean and will be moved continually to again rise so rites of passage and being really engaged with that really aids us in having a conscious relationship with continuum of life and all of its transitions and to celebrate that and to allow ourselves the authenticity of all of the felt emotions that accompany each of those passages. So I hope that um, provides you with some inspiration and comfort and uh, that you'll be more motivated to explore those rites of passage for yourself and, and everyone in your life. Mm -hmm.